Hi, I'm Paul. Happy to talk to you today quickly about this idea of affordability. If we look at the line that I've got across the screen at the moment, it's to help represent the fact that disasters aren't a linear process. How they're generated, how they're experienced, how people recover from them is the result of how we decide to create the system around a disaster. How do we decide who gets protected? How well do they get protected? It's all a result of decision making. And that's an important consideration because we're in a world where you could argue that there's an increasing privatized responsibility to act. There's a greater expectation, rightly or wrongly, that you are supposed to protect yourself against the disaster in concert with other organizations and stakeholders. And because of that, what you could see is there's a great potential for an increase in protection inequalities, in recovery inequalities. So we're expecting people to take a greater burden upon themselves. Some people are better able and better equipped to actually act upon it in a reasonable and effective way. And for that reason, affordability has become uh, a common refrain, for want of a better term, in how people approach the policy around disaster management. It doesn't really have a singular definition, though. And that's important because if you use different ethical basises for determining what is a reasonable contribution, what is a reasonable way of supporting a person, to what extent do they need help, you can end up with a hugely different support infrastructure, which in turn will change how the current patterns of disaster inequalities are seen and how they can be manifested across society and into the future.